teams left in the 2023 NCAA Volleyball Tournament. Let's re-rank them. I took their ranking when they entered the tournament and rearranged the teams based on their performance and wins in the tournament. We love the discussion though, so let me know what you think of this. I wanna hear your thoughts. Okay, I've got no Can Cammie Miner go on a serve run here? There's step one, it's an ace, and we're tied in the fourth set. Skinner. You need a point. Maddie Skinner's the target. Texas two points away from Tampa. You said it moments ago, Eric. How does she get better as the match goes on? It's this competitiveness that allows her to take it to the next level. It's incredible. And you know that Ella Swindle is going to feed her. You just can't stop it sometimes. There's Kayle Akana serving for Texas. Kayla Akana served championship point last year. Now trying to send Texas to Tampa. Off the antenna. Texas is going to Tampa. Jay Guchtekin will start serving for the Badgers. Bergmark in the middle, back in the match and ready to go. And that's been a bright spot. Bella Bergmark has, was known as a defensive middle blocker, but she's been connecting with Ella Swindle much better on that little one push set. Franklin passed that from her knees and still got back up to get a swing off. Franklin again, coming back over. CC Crawford oh, takes it. Dug by Swindle. Dug by Halter. Gooch to Kim with the up. to start that rally and then Asia O'Neill cross body one on one out of the middle to end that long rally. Skinner off hands. And there you see the adjustment. Maddie Skinner much more aggressive hitting away from Shrek who was on the outside working the inside. Looking to turn it, it's long, and she immediately looks to Kelly Sheffield to pull the green challenge card. The call is confirmed, there was no touch, so Wisconsin will not have any more challenges unless we go to a fifth set.
Texas has both challenges remaining. It's coming over. Asia O'Neill loves that. Served up on a platter. This is every middle blocker's dream and overpass for the taking. Her dad, Jermaine O'Neal, has become one of the biggest volleyball fans that we know. Of what course, a six-time NBA All-Star. What a travel schedule he has this oh, week. Yeah. Her brother is playing basketball in the Bahamas, so he's flying back and forth. He's actually the coach. Yes. They'll head out tomorrow to coach and come back if Texas wins. Swindle so looking at Tom Gigi all over it. Skinner back row. The defense for Texas is much improved in this third set. They're throwing their body behind the ball, keeping it alive. And Emma Halter's been fantastic. Look at, again, we get to see Maddie Skinner out of the back row from the middle of the court where she's been very effective. To think that Emma Halter's filling in for Zoe Fleck, who is such a phenomenal Libro for Texas. I love what Jared Elliott told us. He said before this season started, Zoe Fleck met with Emma Halter and said, you're gonna be better than me. How empowering. And that's what Zoe Fleck does. She's a connector. Timeout is called five straight points for Texas and Wisconsin. Needs to talk about it. Man, she's been good. I think she came in last year unafraid, was helping the team defensively, didn't have all the pressure on her. This year was different. An ace for the Longhorns. Maddie Skinner scoring from the service line. Six straight points for Texas. You see the ace leaders in the NCAA tournament. Skinner on this list. Asia O'Neal. Third kill on the slide tonight. But it starts with Maddie Skinner in middle back, putting this defensive ball in system so that Swindle can set Asia O'Neal on the slide. Great pass, great run. 7-0 run now. Devin Robinson. Blocked. And now Texas doing things defensively. We saw it in the backcourt, now we're seeing it the net. Isn't it wild how drastically the momentum can shift back and forth between two teams? And Wisconsin grabbed it right at the end of the first set, carried it into that second set. We saw them go on a 7-0 run in set two. Now it's Texas on an 8-0 run here in set three. Oh, what a serve. Pepper, you got to update your graphic. She's climbing that list. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie Skinner finding ways to score for Texas. It hasn't always been easy in the front row, but now serving up aces for Texas. Wisconsin will take its final timeout in this set. Nine straight points for Texas. Aaron Pepper delivering. That the is graphic fast. is updated, Katie. Fast fingers, Aaron Pepper. They're a completely different team because of the work they've been putting in in the gym every day. More than any other team he's had in one season. The growth has been tremendous. Oh my gosh! Just reach in your back pocket and pull out an ace, Maddie Skinner. An ace or three or four. Such a nice job contacting this ball and dropping it right before Guchtikin. And serving that seam between Franklin and Guchtikin. And so they're gonna make a substitution. Wisconsin will bring in Jocelyn Boyer, number one in white, as Texas has scored 10 straight points. Madison Skinner with three aces. It's 
still out of system. It's a free ball back to Texas. When it's calling for it, tooling the block. Wow, Jenna Wenis staying aggressive when that was a scary block in front of her. Carter Booth and Devin Robinson. Wenis able to tool them out of bounds. by Halter. And a center line violation on Texas. That ends an 11-0 run. Missed opportunity, right? I mean, that transition set is too tight to the net when you're playing a team like Wisconsin. You give your hitter nowhere to go, no options, unfortunately, when you set them that inside and that tight. Wisconsin hands the momentum right back to Texas with a service error. Bevo right behind Asia O'Neill. Timmy Thomas and Laura. Swindle to Winnis. Much better set there, giving Jenna Wenis room to work around that big block. You see, they like to leave it inside, so she's got that cut back down the line, and she works it inside that middle blocker's left. Again, back into the block. Third time the Wisconsin block prevails. Good discipline by Wisconsin to go three for three in blocks against Jenna Winnis. Nice coverage from Texas, but again, just sealing that net time and time again. Texas first contact in serve receive has been really good. They're putting the ball right in freshman setter Ellis Swindle's hands. Look at she doesn't even have to take a step and she's able to put that ball in a juicy spot for Asia O'Neill. How fun is it to set a slide with a hitter like oh, Asia O'Neill? So fun. Well, yeah. I don't know what it's like setting. Yeah. Asia That's <laughs> true. That's true. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> yes. Hands, Timmy Thomas, Ilara. Wisconsin needs to put some service pressure. Anna Smrex in the front row. She can affect this game. Swindle to Bella Bergmark. It was touched at its match point, Texas. Spinner, the bump set to Winnis. And a double called on Jenna Winnis. Second match point coming.
jamming the middle of the court, throwing that ball in the middle because they believe that Nebraska plays on the perimeter defensively behind the block. Batenhorst trying to go line, but turned it too much. That time, Lexi Rodriguez got a chance to pass that ball, kept Nebraska in system. That's just an unforced hitting error for Nebraska. Ellie Batenhorst has had to step up and fill that spot of Lindsey Krause, who has not played since October 14th. She's been out with an ankle injury. And Batenhorst has handled it well. And the halter coming in with the pancake. It was touched by Texas Point, Nebraska. Good aggressive throw down at the net by Nebraska, capitalizing on that opportunity. The Nebraska team that has accomplished so much this season, their most wins since 2006, when they also had 33 on the season. Their first Big Ten title since 2017. Looking for a national championship. Jackson, don't forget it. It's freshman on freshman crime right there. Andy Jackson recognizing that Ella Swindle is up. It's a tight pass. She's all over it. She stays home, presses, gets the block. Watch Maddie Skinner out of the back row in this rotation. Asia O'Neill's going to go slide behind the setter. Nice serve. It's going to send Texas scrambling. And it gets Nebraska a free ball back. And you have to score on a free ball, but Merritt Beeson set up that whole play with the tough serve. And then look at Harper Murray get on that ball so fast. Texas calls a time out. Nebraska with the momentum. Three straight points for the Huskers. Was on varsity in the eighth grade. She knows how to step up and play at the elite level. She told us when she was 13, she was playing up with the 18-year-olds. Can you believe that? Yes. <laughs> Watching her now, absolutely. <laughs> Misconnection, but hey, Maddie Skinner, crafty. Crafty, that sets a little bit too low. Maddie Skinner kind of had that runway going, but she didn't get the same elevation, but finishes with the same result, a little finesse shot over the block. I'd say on the Texas side, when it comes to Ella Swindle and her hitters, we've seen such an evolution because Ella Swindle's had to change her setting. She mostly sets on the ground, does not jump. That's actually helped her set behind better. Here's Winnis tipping around the triple block. Good point by you. I like that location by Jenna Winnis right over the block, but we'll talk about the setter location after that. Look at the triple block and Winnis. Little finesse shot over the block. Ellis Wendell has been managing a lower leg injury, so she's had to adjust her setting, and you'll see her mostly set from the ground, and her location has improved dramatically because she has to work to get her feet to the ball. Yeah, it's interesting. Most setters would prefer to jump set. It gives you a really nice rhythm when you get to the ball and power. But unfortunately, because of the injury that she's been nursing, they had to transition her back to staying on the floor so she does not jump set. She said it was a really hard transition to kind of rework where her location needed to be for these hitters, but they've actually benefited from it. On ace for Texas. That's six aces for the Longhorns. Every time Asia O'Neill extends those arms, all I can think is Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Step in the gladiator ring, baby. Timeout, Nebraska as Texas comes out of the break. They're on a 4-0 run now. And they are going to serve away from Lexi Rodriguez all day long. Texas enough pace to 
be disruptive. And you see Merritt Beeson getting her team together, calming them down, talking it through, being that leader that this team has relied on through the entirety of this season. is able to get a swing off. Skinner, back row. 7-0 run for the Longhorns. And all the momentum is with Texas right now because they know they've got these passers on the ropes. Great job by Texas and Ellis Wendell recognizing I've got another option here. I'm going to just flip this ball behind, get Maddie Skinner in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And now we've got a substitution here on Nebraska side. Yeah, Hayden Kubik is going to come in. She has played in nine sets on the season as Nebraska tries to shore up some passing. Number 11 in white. And they'll serve right at her. Morgan Riley has to hustle all the way across the court. Kubik again. is on a 9-0 run, including four straight aces. Texas was able to put so much service pressure on Wisconsin in the semifinal, and here they go again. Yeah, and it was interesting watching Asia O'Neal almost yo-yo the serve receivers from Nebraska. She goes deep, catches you high, and then she drops this one right in front of you. So you don't know whether you're going to need to take a step back first or a step forward. And that's what it is when you're yo-yoing a serve receiver like that. And that's the same technique that they used against Wisconsin, and they went after some of the players that looked gassed on the other side of the net. And it works really well, as we're seeing. Jared Elliott told us yesterday he wanted to do that. He wanted to take players like Andy Jackson out of the out of the lineup, right? I mean, not out of the lineup off the court, but she can't be a factor. She cannot be a factor. Defense. Yes, and and they've been able to pull the setter off the net. Yeah, and I think for Nebraska right now, you just got to regroup, take a deep breath. We've seen them obviously respond all season long. This is a phenomenal team. They've just gotten in a rut. They've gotten stuck in this one rotation. You come out, you side out, then you go on a run with your serve. If you're Texas, you better put your foot on the gas because Nebraska will respond. No more timeouts in this set. Texas on a 9-0 run with Asia O'Neill behind the service line. Look at Riley is going to try to dump. Texas was ready. Jenna Winnis coming in. Yes, dropped it in the back row. Akana just was stepped into the middle, knew that setter attack was coming because Bergen Riley was in the front row and they are stuck in this rotation. 10-0 run, four aces during this run, all in a row. This serve gets a free ball back to Texas. Skinner, back row. This is 
been a dominant run from Texas. Ellis Wendell knows she's got a third option in Maddie Skinner, and it is a great one coming right up the middle. Love a good bird's eye view. Yeah, beautiful angle from our crew. 11-0 run that matches the run they went on in the semifinals against Wisconsin in set three. And that will be why the break that Nebraska was hoping for. Yeah, and Lexi Rodriguez passed that ball perfectly. Finally, she was targeted or she was able to steal from one of her teammates to put that ball on Bergen Riley's head so they could run out of it. And then it results in an error from Texas. its final timeout in this set. They are down 10 in a must-win set. Texas four points away. It's a Nebraska team that hits 278 on the season. Asia O'Neill serving. Batenhorst. Swindle to Maddie Skinner. 16. If you're Texas, you know she's on your side of the net. We talked about her out of the back row. She is just unstoppable today. Taken over as the leader of this team. So close to back-to-back -to -back titles. Saved by Asia O'Neill with one arm. Sometimes there are days where everything you touch turns to gold. One of those days for Texas. Asia O'Neill making plays defensively for this team. Just keeping it alive and Wynn is throwing the ball over deep to the corner. A 14 to 4 run right now for Texas. for the championship. Just like last year, back to back on an ace for Texas. Your national champions, the Texas Longhorns. Joe O'Neill. 